This is Paddy Graham, world-class free skier, and everything he's doing right now is a breeze. Now, take a look at these skis. These are traditional cross-country skis. So what happens when you take a professional free skier out of his element and put him on a pair of Nordic skis oh above the Arctic Circle? The downhill is so hard. I mean, it's tough going downhill on those things. It's completely different. And the origins of skiing might surprise you, like the fact that it was used as a utilitarian form of warfare and then adapted into a competitive sport by the Norwegian army. But skiing's roots go back even further than that. These are the Sami people an indigenous group that inhabits this region of Scandinavia called Sápmi. But it's here in this region that spans these four countries where the Sámi people have used skis as a form of transportation and survival for more than 6,000 years. So together, we're going to discover how far the modern sport of skiing goes back and to see if a professional free skier like Paddy can adapt to this old form of transportation. So in order to understand the origins of skiing here in Sápmi, we have to first look at the unique culture of the Sámi people of today and centuries ago. Sámi people are the people who was here thousands of years before us. We came from the south, from Europe, and they, but they were already here. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Before the Sámi was here alone for at least five, six thousand years. Mm -hmm. We were hardly skiing at that time, but they were already yeah. been doing it for thousands of years. Skiing was an integral part of transportation and life across Sápmi. These ancient skis were wooden planks of varying size and shape that were invented to cross wetlands and marshes when the landscape froze over. This lake that was stood on is a great example. They would have skied over this, through the marshes, into the wetlands. That's how one of the most ancient skis was found in a swamp, which is dated back 5,000 years ago. It's extremely old. I'm old enough where my first skis were wooden skis. Impressive that they can do anything with those. Luckily, I haven't tried them too much. Have you seen how big these skis are? There's some big skis. <laughs> The skis, the skis are so big, they're in feet um, and not in <laughs> centimeters. Skis are a special Sami invention. These uh, are uh, made of uh, birch and also some pine because pine is very light and very strong. You can bend it. Obviously, the main difference is, is the, the height, the length of the ski and the width also. This has so many moving parts of this. And on the traditional ski, it's just a strap. Back in the days, for a couple of hundred years and more, thousand years back in time, there, there was no snowmobiles. In the summertime, there was walking. In the wintertime, there was skiing. My grandfather and my father, they are grown up with only skis. My generation, we are grown up with snowmobiles. But we're sk still skiing with this ski if it's uh, if it's tricky terrain in the forest. What are the benefits about these old skis? You can have these kind of shoes. You can walk with them, you can be outside and inside, and then you can just put them in this. Very easy to just hook them on and then just skiing. Then you can just jump out them, walk. Then I have my rope around it. Mm -hmm. And then you have also the traditional Sami clothes, and you can see exactly where the people who use it comes from. What I think is really interesting is that skiing for you is like part of your life and like it's how you work. Whereas for for me and I don't know everyone in Europe, it's just like a leisure uh, sport. Oh wow, they're so light. I don't know which side's which. Is this the left one? Does it matter? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Draw this always on the outside. That's an old tradition. These are the comfiest ski boots I've ever ever worn. Oh my god, that's it. Ready to go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> have some reindeer boots on and a, and a little strap. That's it. What's so amazing is that the toe works. Like, I mean, it's obviously proven. It's like the oldest ski boot system in the world. And after this, the whole team wanted to have a go at cross-country skiing. So we followed Anders into the valley where he was going to take us on our first Arctic ski tour. Are you ready to try some cross-country skiing? Well, I'm ready. Are you ready? That's the, that's the big question. Sorry. It's not the skiing I learnt. He's out of the bindings. <laughs> Legs are gonna freeze. 
<laughs> you remember that he's any of this and he's swearing all the time. <laughs> So as I drag myself across this valley, let's get back to the evolution of skiing, because with it becoming such an essential form of transportation, it was inevitable that its uses would become more widely utilized. In the 1760s in Norway, skiing was recorded as being used for military training. The Norwegian army held ski competitions involving skiing down slopes and around trees and obstacles whilst shooting. And over the next hundred years, skiing evolved to the recreational activity and sport that we know it as today. And during this time, two main genres of skiing emerged, alpine skiing and Nordic skiing. Paddy, can you explain the difference? The biggest difference, I guess, is that alpine skiing, you're going down the mountain and cross-country skiing, you are going across the country on the flat bit and it's better suited in flat bits. That's why I'm not looking forward to skiing down here. <laughs> and you shouldn't be either. <laughs> Pretty good hospital nearby. <laughs> this going? Mate, the downhill, <laughs> my favourite part. You did really good today. It's your first ski tour out and you're above the Arctic Circle in the middle of nowhere. I love how it's all mountain based but how different it can be. The sport of skiing in the Alps is they slope up in the hills. The traditional way was going in the valleys, actually avoiding the dangerous and difficult terrain. Uh -huh. But now free riding come more and more into the mountain range. So people are climbing the steep stuff and having fun playing on the hills. We're just here visiting this Sami village and the light right now is unreal. Look at my face. Look at Paddy's face. Look at that. What a morning, eh? What a morning. Where do you see skiing going in like the next five to 10 years? Competitive skiing, almost at a peak now. And I think where you see it going in the future is it being more accessible to people to be able to get out, explore, and just to be in nature. I mean, look at us, look at like this. it's beautiful. This is our final day in Sapmi, and my mind is getting blown pretty regularly on this trip. Holy sh... We found them. Oh my God, you can see it on the camera. Can you actually? Wow. Look! Wow. Oh my it really and I can't help but stop, look around and think about how the Sami people lived in this extraordinary part of the world for thousands of years. This whole area of Scandinavia was uninhabited apart from these people who found these ingenious ways of living in these extreme conditions. And it's been really interesting understanding how important it is for the Sami people to keep up these old traditions. And at the same time, adapting to the new challenges and innovations of our time. Their culture has evolved, but the core values remain the same. And I think there is a parallel there with skiing. The origins of skiing finds its roots as a means of transportation and a way of survival. And it's taken many different forms and branched out into many different disciplines. It evolved with the times like the Sami culture itself. But the core aspects of the sport are still recognizable throughout the different branches. Doing a good job, he's doing a good job. And although Paddy's freestyle skis may look different to these old cross-country skis, there's a common thread of self-fulfillment and a connection to the natural environment through what is essentially walking across these beautiful landscapes on two pieces of wood. When I was younger, I loved competing. But the older I got, the more I kind of like thought about what it is that I like. And that is when you're dropping in, you don't think about anything else than what you're doing right there. The nature aspect together with the experience, that is the, the best part of it. People like doing it. People get pleasure from it. You know, no matter how you do it, people are having fun. Yeah. And that statement has been repeated all week by everybody we've met. Whether they ski to herd reindeer to be at one with nature or whether they compete as a professional skier. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Origins. Let us know in the comments below what sport you want us to cover next on this show. And I will see you guys in the next one.